This is high-tech water. It's a new kind of fire retardant that could have a huge impact on how we fight fires. Why do this? Well, the answer to that question is obvious to anyone living in California, Oregon, Washington, Australia, Colorado, Texas, or anywhere else that's constantly on fire these days. Every year for the last five years, we've had a record fire year, and it keeps going up. It's a big, big problem. It's a global problem. The fire service has a tradition of not changing very fast. I've had to accept limitations and learn to overcome them. How can we change it? Where can we take this? What's possible? I looked at the firefighting industry the same way. We're deploying a better bullet to fight the enemy. Stronger water won't solve all of our problems, but it might solve a really big one. This is Hard Reset, a series about rebuilding our world from scratch. Ground zero for shenanigans. Here's the worst beating I ever took from a wave in my life. Outer reef in Oahu, that's my little head. Almost killed me again. This is Jeff Denholm. He's the man who is single-handedly changing the way we fight fires. For context, he does everything single-handedly because uh, turns out working on a commercial fishing boat is very dangerous. Summer 93, I was working on a dragger fishing for cod in the Bering Sea. We were in a really heavy storm. I slipped backwards and my arm went into the drive shaft of this processing equipment and it sucked me in, destroyed my arm. Managed to survive 21 hours on the boat before being medevaced off the ship. Losing his arm meant Jeffrey had to reinvent his whole approach to surfing and outdoor sports in general. His whole life, really. That's not easy. Oh, might be a little dark. Got a workshop, I'm constantly working on prosthetics. In this case, I've set up here with a paddle blade that's for paddle boarding. Losing a limb is a hard reset. It's taught me to be resourceful, to adapt, to overcome. I have a creative mind, a spatial mind, and certainly with you know, the loss of my arm, I, the things that were important to me, the athletic things that were important to me, drove me towards innovation. Jeffrey's adaptability is about a lot more than just creative prosthetics. He didn't accept the limitations that other people had imagined for him. Even after his accident, Jeff was able to continue his career as a professional outdoor athlete, as well as a wildland firefighting contractor. Which brings us to the next big challenge he decided to tackle. Through my engagement in that business, I recognized that the industry was in need of in innovation, that we were getting our butts kicked. The most widely used retardant today is a product called FOSCheck, and it's typically deployed from fixed-wing airplanes. It's hazardous to waterways and kills fish. I saw it as an opportunity, certainly as an environmentalist, I want to jump in and try to create an alternative to the status quo. I had a buddy at Patagonia ask what I'm doing, and I said, can you believe they're dropping this red retardant from the sky that it's not putting the fires out, it kills fish in streams, and seems like we can do better. And he's like, what are you going to do about it? Well, what he did about it was put in years of work to find the people, money, and chemistry needed for a better alternative. It's a water enhancement technology. It doesn't contain any oils, surfactants, and it's fully biodegradable. The gel wraps and clings and smothers and robs the fire of oxygen. We're getting water to stick and stay where the heat is. It just exponentially increases the suppression capacity of water by at least 10x, we've proven in testing. Firefighting is a profession that is slow to embrace change. But right now, things really do need to change. So you talk to firemen 30 years ago, and they didn't fight wildfires like we do today. The wildland fires of today are greater intensity than they've ever been before. The sheer size and the amount of acreage that we can burn in one fire is up into the millions. San Bernardino is the largest county in California. It's actually the largest county in the entire U.S. It's bigger than Rhode Island. But then who isn't? I don't know what that means. Anyway, they also have one of the largest fire management problems. That's why they're eager to try out something like strong water. 20, 30 years ago, if you lost a structure, that was a pretty big deal. Now it's not if we're gonna lose a structure, it's how many structures will we lose before we actually stop the fire from progressing. 
Spraying water on the homes before the fire front gets there really isn't an effective method because the radiant heat from the fire will dry the water out before the fire gets to it. So this gel allows us to keep that barrier of water there through the fire front. Strong water makes it easier for firefighters on the ground. Spraying the gel before the fire gets there and before the firefighters themselves are in any danger. It's also compatible with helicopters, which can't normally use corrosive fire retardants. It creates whole new possibilities for quickly responding to fires as they're detected. This is f***ing Smith grade. This is Smith grade in my f***ing driveway. A couple years back, Jeffreystown was threatened by wildfires, and there simply weren't enough resources to protect the whole area. You can see the burn scars on the trees right here. In the midst of the CZU Lightning Complex fire in Santa Cruz County, Jeff was able to utilize strong water to save a local winery along with several other neighbors' homes. It was probably like 10 days straight of engagement that I was in. I lost track because I was sleeping three hours a night, and but I coughed. I mean, we all did. I mean, I had shit in my lungs for three months. <sighs> that was, uh, yeah. Still, still a little PTSD thinking about it. You know, I don't have any experience with, uh, you know, facing things like that. Whenever I ran into people, I'm like, where have you seen it? What road was it on? Or we do make rosé out of our vineyards. Okay. You know, this year we didn't have any option because the yep. smoke had destroyed all the grapes. You lost everything. Yep. So you missed a whole year. Yeah, but still got our houses. Yeah. Still got the winery, so there was, um, I think there was more gain than loss. Thanks for saving the house, man. You got it. <laughs> so picture a scenario where a network of helicopters or even drones were tanked up with a substance like strong water, where fires could be responded to effectively as soon as they were detected. A rapid response network like this is totally within the realm of the possible. Helicopter and drone launch sites have a much smaller footprint than the kinds of airports that are needed for water bombers so it's much more feasible to have them distributed across a large area. Our product's made for direct flame engagement. The goal is to have a crew loaded up. We have a mix station that our company runs, like a pit crew that will load a tank that helicopters will be able to come to and draw the material out and rotate to the fire and drop. Putting out fires quickly isn't enough. We still need to address the buildup of fuel in our forests, something that can only be done safely with cutting edge AI and prescribed burns. See our next video about that. But this is still something we need to do in the near term if we want to avoid the kinds of tragedies we're seeing more and more of. It's funny, I had a surgeon in Seattle after my surgery he came in and he said, Jeff, a lot of stuff's going through your head right now. And I know you're a young guy, 26 years old, I lost my arm. And he said, it's just not that complicated. He goes, you either go up or you let this take you down. It's on or off. You just got to make a decision. And he goes, I think you're going to go up. It's just about completely erasing the noise and focusing on going the right direction. And that is up. <laughs>